If you think the only way that you can improve your tennis is by getting on the court, think again. Because in today's lesson, I'm gonna share with you three powerful ways that you can improve without even hitting a tennis ball. My name is Jeff Salzenstein. I'm the founder of Tennis Evolution. In today's video lesson, I'm going to share with you how you can improve your tennis without hitting a ball. And you're going to improve your footwork, your technique, and your strength. Let's get into the video right now. Obviously, I'm going to assume that you are using your split step when you play, okay? So you're practicing your split step. But the key to this crab footwork pattern is being able to load the outside leg and then when you finish, you're gonna get into this crab position, okay? So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna show you how this looks on the forehand side. And before I show you the crab position, I'm going to show you how to split and load. So what you're gonna do, and you can do this again, right at home without hitting a ball. You're going to split, and then you're just gonna step out like this. And now notice when I step out, I'm focusing on a first move right here. So notice how this arm pulls across, this, the racket is to the side of the body. It's almost like I'm holding a ball. I'm not taking the racket back right away. I notice also a lot of players, when they step out, they, they keep the racket here. They don't get the turn to happen. So when you split and step out, then you're gonna focus on getting into this position right here. Very, very key. Now, it's time for the crab. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna make sure that when you split and you step out, you're now going to swing. Now, we're assuming the ball's coming pretty fast here, okay? The ball's coming pretty fast, and you're going to swing, and when you swing, you're going to essentially shuffle in this direction. So you're gonna shuffle like this and get to this position right here. So I'm gonna do that again, and I want you to see how I finish at the end. Okay, I'm gonna step out, and I'm gonna freeze like this. Now, this is the big key. This is your crab right here. You're down in this low position like this. Most players, when they get to this position, first of all, they never get to this position, but they're narrow like this. You have to get in a wide base and get down into this strong position. That means you gotta get some stronger legs right here, okay? You gotta do a lot of squats. You gotta hold positions down here because most players want to be narrow and they want to be high. And if your center of gravity is high, you're not going to be balanced, you're not going to hit great shots. But there's another subtle key that I want you to understand here, is when you finish, when you finish at the end, I want you to notice my pelvis, my hips. Now, a lot of players, when they get out wide or when they're in this base, after they finish this crab position, this open stance crab position, their butt is sticking back like this. So that means the water, if you had a bucket here, the water is spilling forward like this. Now this would be great if you were squatting in a gym, but we're not, we're playing tennis. And so you've gotta make sure that your pelvis stays neutral in this position so the water cannot spill out, can't spill forward, okay? So you have to push, you have to push your pelvis forward, it's like, if you had a tail behind you, it'd be like tucking the tail. And this is a very important concept to finish in this crab position. So I'll do it again, I'll do it quicker. And again, this is if the ball is coming fast and it's just to the side of you, okay? But you can also do it if you uh, are running across the court and you step across like this and you, and you finish. But we don't have a lot of space here and we're at home, in this case I'm in the driveway, maybe you're even inside in your living room, it's a simple step out move, and then you finish in the crab, and you're tucking the tail, the pelvis is neutral, you're in a wide base, notice how the feet are outside the shoulders, and then you're gonna hold your follow through. So you see how my, my elbows are relaxed, they're not outstretched like this, racket tip is angled. We've gotta set the foundation. Notice my legs, my feet. My feet are in a wide base, so I've got my feet outside my shoulders. I'm not standing here like this. Then I see a lot of players, they don't even split, so you can practice your split. But here's where the magic starts to happen. You've gotta get that set up right. 
to, to uh, be more successful on the court, to play better tennis. But here's where it all goes wrong, this first move. And so what we're gonna correct today is when you make your first move, notice my hands here, when I split, and I, I take one step, we're gonna talk about the step in a second. If I take one step, look at where the racket goes. Look at where the racket goes. If I were to step out, look at where the racket goes. Right when you see the balls come into your forehand, before it even crosses over the net, you wanna make this move right here. You don't wanna make the move like this. You don't wanna make the move like this. No dinosaur arms with the off hand, okay? We wanna get this off arm out like this. So, so important to get this first move right. Imagine dominoes, right? If you, if you have the dominoes, if one domino hits the second one and they're all in line and they all fall together, that means the first domino got things started in the right direction. Okay, what if, you're, what, if you, what if you barely just nip that second domino? It's probably not gonna, ne ne it's not gonna knock the next one down. So you can't take the racket back like this. You can't turn sideways like this. You can't uh, have your off arm like this. The first move is crushing your forehand, okay? So when you make this move, notice the elbow. The elbow is away, okay? The elbow is away right here. It's not in, it's not tucked in, it's not like this, okay? So we're getting in this position. Notice the off arm, it's fairly straight. It's at about shoulder height, it's not down here. We're not doing this. I'm harping on this because we're not practicing this enough. We're not focusing on this move enough. So we get this move and watch again that step. So watch that step, watch this step, this shuffle right here. So we want to try to coordinate the upper body movement, turning the shoulders, pulling the arm across, racket tip up. We wanna coordinate this with the first move, wherever you have to go. So if you have to drop step, you can do that. If you have to step out and then step in, you do that. If you have to run around a forehand, watch my shuffle around the ball. If you're coming forward, you do a small step forward like this. If you're hitting approach shot, you take a bigger step forward. That's all there is to it. I want you to practice getting set up correctly. Every time you hold a racket, get set up correctly with the racket. Arms relaxed, wide base, okay? You can split and then step, right? Watch this again. Split, step. This is if I wanna move up to the ball. I don't see a lot of players at the intermediate club players, even juniors, I don't see them moving up to the ball and attacking it. If they move up to the ball, I see maybe a lot of pitter patters. Okay, no pitter patters, no small little steps, rhythm steps. So you make the move and you don't have to split in the beginning. You can just stand and move, stand and move. And what do you think the next progression is gonna be? We're gonna add a little shuffle, okay? Sometimes I even add a little gallop. Watch this gallop. See how this foot came in front? Step here. Now imagine the power, and the energy that you can put into the ball if you start moving correctly. If your technique improves here, if you step forward, shuffle, and rip. Imagine the, the energy that you can generate. I'm gonna tell you right now, you can absolutely crush the ball if you get this move down. Right? So, but it starts with the ready position, the wide base, the relaxed arms, the first move. That's, that has to happen. I don't care where you move, look where my racket is. You can separate the hands. You can be here. You don't have to hold on as long like Federer. Some players hold on a really long time like this, and they can make it work. You might be late on your forehand if you do that. You can separate as long as that arm goes across and the racket doesn't go back. You keep the racket up like this. So you make that first move with the racket tip up. So you're, 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 you're training yourself to move like this. See how I'm moving and I'm keeping my feet apart? I'm not crossing over, I'm not doing pitter patters, okay? I'm not plodding along, there's rhythm, there's bounce, right? It's like a dance, tennis is like a dance. So, you're gonna practice, again, for, for you to come forward and attack the ball, instead of going back and then trying to go forward, 
All you're gonna do is stand your ground, make that step, make that step. Over and over again, you can do a set of five, a set of 10. And these three exercises are very powerful. Don't underestimate them, especially how simple they're going to look. The first one is an upper body exercise. Excuse me, the first one is a lower body exercise. And what you're gonna practice is what I call a single leg squat. So here's your single leg squat. We put the leg back that's off the ground and we just simply go down, up and down like this. You're working on your balance. Now, if you lose your balance, you can easily toe tap with that back leg like this. Now, I want you to notice my knee here. My knee is not collapsing in. A lot of players struggle with this. If they don't have strong uh, hips, and if they don't have stable hips, and if they have inflexible ankles. So I want you to really keep that knee over the second toe like this. If you can't lift this foot off the ground, you can just keep it assisting you like this until you can get better at going down like this. So the upper body does come forward on that exercise. Now, you can do a set of 10, you can do a set of 15. With these three exercises today, we can focus on doing two to three sets in the 10 to 15 rep range. So you're gonna do this single leg exercise. Now, players might say, well, gosh, this looks so simple. You're not lifting weights, you're not squatting, you're not deadlifting. Yes, all of that can be important, but you've gotta practice your single leg strength. Tennis is played off of one leg. Lots of jumping. If you can't jump out there, then maybe you can practice working on your ankle flexibility, your leg strength, and your hips and your hip mobility and hip stability so that you can maybe get off the ground a little bit. The best players in the world can get off the ground. And you've got to practice single leg strength. If you serve, if you're a serve, you're going off of both feet, but at some point in the swing, a lot of players shift to the front foot and there's more weight on the front foot when they jump. So just keep in mind, you wanna develop your single leg strength. Now, when I was playing on the tour, what helped me break the top 100 in the world was having insane strength. In fact, when I was 32 years old, 31, 32, before I retired, I was deadlifting 400 pounds at a body weight of 165. I'm about 175 now, I'm 10 pounds over my playing weight. It's probably actually too skinny on the tour. But I was doing pistols religiously all the time. Now pistols basically involve going down to the ground like this and going up. Now I used to be a lot better at that. I could hold weights, 20 or 30 pounds in each hand and go down and do my pistols. I'm not asking you to, to learn the pistol. I'm just showing you the importance of having these strong tree trunk legs that can help you become a better tennis player, help you feel more stable, get you into a wide base. That's just the first exercise. The second exercise is you can just take a towel and I love using a towel and I love practicing isometrics, which could be for another video. Isometrics are where you hold tension for a certain amount of time. But what we're gonna do here is we're gonna practice, I'll do it forward first. We're gonna practice doing a bent over towel row. So imagine you're holding weights, but you can just pull straight to the chest. You can even go a little bit lower and pull to the belly. I really feel that in my back. So tennis players get rounded shoulders, they're swinging forward all the time. We've got to get that posture stronger. Uh, it's more, uh, you've got to get taller when you play, when you're out there. Yes, you've got to get down for the ball, but you've got to feel tall. You don't want to have your shoulders slump forward. It's bad for your shoulder health, bad for your confidence. So we've got to get those shoulders, I'll turn sideways this time, we gotta get those shoulders back and we gotta get that back stronger because we're doing so much forward movement, we have to offset this. So this is your upper body exercise that you can superset with the single leg squat. So you can do a single leg squat, rest for 30 seconds, pick up the towel, and then do this, do this movement, the low, the low row or the regular row with a towel. Amazing exercise, I feel that in the back of my shoulders and in my back, I'm already starting to fatigue out. It's gonna make you so much stronger on the court. Think of the, the backhand volley, okay? Uh, the ability to decelerate the arm because you have strong back muscles and shoulders. So important uh, to prevent injuries and to get stronger. And you're just using a towel. We don't need dumbbells. Another way, uh, I mentioned the isometrics earlier, you can hold a position like this. That's a great one to do for time. But maybe we can do that in another video. I've got a lot of training videos I can help you with 
you know, a lot of times we focus on footwork and technique and strategy, but there's a whole athletic development uh, part of tennis. And it's what helped me break the top 100 in the world, helped me overcome two serious injuries. So with that being said, let's go to the third exercise. Remember, this can be done in 10 to 15 minutes just by doing these three exercises. So what you're gonna do here is you're gonna do a plank with a shoulder tap. So what you can practice, I'm actually gonna fold this up. So my knees need a little support. So what you're gonna do here is you're gonna plank and you're simply going to touch your shoulders like this. And you don't wanna to try to, you don't wanna to sway too much. You wanna to try to avoid the sway and you just touch, tap your shoulders and you can do again you can tap your shoulders five times on each side ten times on each side you can hold that for, you can hold that for time say 45 seconds lots of different program design suggestions I'm just giving you ideas if that's too difficult to do what you can do is you can go from your knees a lot of you out there should really start from your knees and get this movement I really feel this in my core I've got to stabilize my core with these shoulder tap planks. Now, I had a blast making this lesson for you. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure that you're subscribed to the channel, you turn on your notifications so you can get updated on all the latest lessons, and hey, a thumbs up would be great. I'd really appreciate it. And before you go, I've got a free membership offering for you. Yeah, no strings attached, no credit card. I wanna give you a free membership inside Tennis Evolution. We have 21 bonus lessons to give you. You can use the Tennis Evolution app all the lessons are on the inside or in our online portal, so click the link in the description below or somewhere in this video and you can get access to our free membership covering all aspects of the game and that will be your next step on your journey. I enjoyed making this lesson for you today and we'll see you at the next one.